What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 103 of the Rise to Glory here at Gibraltar Apex and today I have you guys another episode. If you didn't watch last episode and it is the reason I'm on this manager profile screen, go watch it, go back. Episode 102, definitely one worth watching because going into the game we didn't know where our fate lied in Europe. Either way, if you, I'm now going to assume that if you've got to this point, you, you know what happened. And if you didn't, well, one last warning. Let's have a look today. PSG, the opponents, were taking them on in the Champions League first knockout round. Now, this this has proven a stumbling block for the last few years for us. We've got to this stage in the competition, three out of the last four years, and we've lost every time. Now, granted, PSG, actually, probably of all the teams we've got at this stage, are the biggest and probably the hardest team for us to have been drawn against. I think previously we've taken on Sporting... Uh, to, uh, well, Sporting, we'll call them Sporting, it's like Sporting de Club Portugal. I, I'm sorry to my Portuguese viewers, you're going you're gonna to moan at me, I'm sorry. And of course, the other team we lost to uh, was AC Milan. So, I think PSG is probably the hardest team we've played at this stage. Of course, last year as well, we were in the Europa League, and well, let's, let's not talk about that. We lost in the first knockout round of that competition too. So, when it comes to the knockout rounds following the group stage in Europe... We don't really have the best record right now, and well, as much as I'd like to come in here all confident and be like, yes, we're going to beat PSG, let's be realistic, this is a PSG side who we played in one of our first ever games in Europe a little while ago now, I say a little while ago, it was a long time ago, back in, what year would it have been, what year was it? I guess it was the year 2022, that was the first year, and yeah, you can see here, our first ever Champions League group stage game, we lost 7-1. Now, I want to get some vengeance for that. Now, whether or not we're actually going to be able to do it is a whole other matter, but I feel like going into this game, this is what's going to be fresh on my mind. It's worth noting, of course, we are now in February, the transfer window has come and passed for the kind of winter period. If you missed last episode, I went over three new signings that we are kind of calling the three musketeers. That's Cabral, Velalba, and uh, Gennari. We made a few more additions to the squad, spent just, well, around £2 million, really. The first player we have here, I am going to call him Cara. That says a little bit of a nod to Jamie Carragher, who went by a similar name, but also because this guy's a, a pretty decent centre-back. We've brought him in. He's on £4,000 a week. I needed a backup centre-back, really, because with uh, Mustafa, with uh, Frigere and with Del Sol, we didn't really have a fourth choice centre-back, and there were a few times, as you guys may remember, during our group stage campaign, where we didn't have, like, a good centre-back, so I've got this guy in, brought him in from Arsenal, very good fee, I think, we've only paid 195k for his services, you can see he did actually play a little bit in the Premier League this year, didn't really make a mark in the squad, his contract was running out at the end of the year, and for £200,000 to get in a, a good backup player who isn't cup-tied in Europe, I'm pretty happy about. The next two signings, I don't want to say these are silly signings, but I thought that we needed to try and expand and one way I thought we could try and do that is by signing a few players from Asia which is something we've not really done in, done in this save yet. So the first player we have here is Yang Ji. He is a Chinese player who has 17 caps at the age of 18. He looks like he could be a pretty good centre mid. You can see his potential is very much lacking. He's very much a player who I brought in just as a, a bit of a trophy signing in some ways. It shows some progress, the fact we're able to sign a player from Real Madrid. But additionally, signing a player who is a Chinese like, national team player could help us bolster our kind of reputation, I guess, in Asia just a little bit. And that is a similar mentality that I went with Jung Wun Kyun who is a uh, South Korean, this guy perhaps a little bit more useful for us, 18 years old, joins us for just shy of a million pounds, he actually looks like he could be a fairly useful little backup player, backup of all backups, he's got five caps already for South Korea, not a bad player to get in, very very cheap to bring in too, and well, he's a young player who's actually wanted by a few fairly reasonable clubs, and that was another reason why I decided to go in for him, you know, with AC Milan, Roma, Benfica, Porto, Teams who are kind of at a similar standard to ours, I guess, in terms of where they get to in the Champions League. I felt like it was a good signing to do. And uh, yeah, we brought him in for a really cheap price of less than a million pounds. But anyway, you guys don't really care about these random backup signings that I've made. I'm sure, sure some of you do. But really, you're here to watch a Champions League game. Now, of course, we are going to do both Champions League games in this episode, of course, trying to get that kind of revenge, I guess, on PSG. You can see there is a big gap between this game and the next game. I'm just going to play through all the games in between off camera. You guys don't really want to see them. Um, so, yeah, let's get into this game. This is a massive one. It's a big challenge. We're going to play the 4-4-2 attack. In terms of our team, 
It's pretty much the full strength team, in my opinion. The only exception really is the fact that Marquez is currently suspended, as is Christian Mendes. So down the right-hand side, we are lacking our first choice right back and right mid. Fortunately for us, though, we do have, of course, Jason Hall, who will slot into the right back position. We then have Jay Marriott, who will then slot in at left back for us. And uh, with Martinez uh, in the squad, of course, due to Mendes's absence, he's going to be taking that spot out in the right-hand side of midfield. Perhaps not the greatest right-hand side of midfielder, but Daniel Martinez, a very good player, a talented young Uruguayan. Uh, my assistant thinks he's close to his potential. Even if he is, he's still a very good player in our team. And uh, you can see in the league, he's done very well for us, although that's kind of to be expected. In Europe, uh, he's been a little bit lacking. He's come off, on, uh, come off the bench a few times, but never really had a massive impact on a game. So yeah, let's get into this first game against PSG. The first leg, we are at home for this. So defensively, we want to be strong if we can be, of course. Uh, the fact that Jay Marriott plays, he, he he has a bit of a curse, I feel, around him. I'm sure some of you guys agree. He has this weird habit of getting sent off in Europe. I'm hoping we're not going to see that from him today. I am going to tell my players not to go in hard on some of these opposition players. We don't want to go around breaking too many legs. Uh, looking at the PSG side quickly, Roya, a player who may be familiar to you guys, I believe he scored six against us in our first ever group stage game against PSG. So... In that 7-1 defeat, he got six of them. A bit well known for that. They've got a few other good players as well. They've got Luis Lopez here, really good Portuguese goalkeeper in the centre midfield. They've uh, centre back position. They've of course got Marquinhos, who's still a very good player, aged 34. Kind of cool to see he's stuck with the club throughout. They've got this guy, Uribe, who is a Peruvian, 29 years old, looks like an absolutely insane centre back. And yeah, I think simply put, they are a slightly stronger team than ours. That said, you know, we go into this game, I want to just encourage the players to get to the knockout stage again. is absolutely fantastic, but, you know, we don't want to be here making up the numbers if we can afford it. We want to be here helping our coefficient, boosting ourselves through, and I'm hoping that that is what we are going to be able to do today in this game. Of course, we are at home, we are at the Space Park, it's our home ground. We've got some good results here. That game, last episode, of course, where we beat Bayer Leverkusen, the German champions, and first seeds in our group, 4-2. A really memorable one. And it's going to need to be a similar performance to that today. And actually, looking at it, 25 minutes gone. No shots on target for either team. PSG having more possession, having a few shots off target. But it's been a very tame opening to this game. And actually, the time is just continuing to tick away. 40 minutes gone. We might get to half-time without a single replay, which would be a little bit anticlimactic. But at the same time, a clean sheet is good, preventing the away goals. You know, I can live with that. Going to try and encourage the players as well here, of course. But no, I, I, PSG didn't have a lot of chances. We didn't have a lot of chances. That's not a bad first half, you know. And this, I, I kind of feel like, as much as I really want to see us progress in this competition, I have to be realistic. I want us to be competitive here against PSG. We need to defend well in this first leg. I'm sure after the break, they are going to come out the traps flying. But if we have an opportunity, we need to look to try and take it. And most importantly, we need to defend set pieces well like that. Now can we break Van Dijk, Smith... This is where we shine as a team. Jay Marriott, the left back, on a booking. I mentioned he likes to get sent off. Bouchard, edge of the box. Thought he was going to crack a shot. Dispossessed, and now we are in some trouble. Big ball over the top. Frigier, don't screw up the back pass. He doesn't screw it up. That's always a nervy moment in FM, although that clearance by Young, an absolute shocker, but he makes up for it with the save there. That was a clear-cut chance for PSG, and having, well, contained them very well in the first half, immediately... <laughs> Um, we've kind of forgotten how to do that here. Young, with a little bit of a disappointing kick, clear, ended up breaking away to PSG. In the end, he did get back across to the save, atoned for his error. I think we've got to make some changes here. I'm really worried about Jade Marriott on a booking. I'm going to take him off and I'm going to bring in Kara. I mentioned the Greek centre-back, a player who I brought in to be my fourth-choice centre-back. Another thing I really like about him is the fact he can play left-back. Now, he's not the best left-back going forward, but in this kind of situation where I do want to change my team, one of the issues I have had in recent years has been there's been some positions, but sim simply put, I couldn't take off a player in order Um to bring on a player who could play that position. So I feel like, you know, getting a few players who perhaps can play a few more positions is going to benefit us like Kara does here. Elsewhere in the team, JJ having a pretty poor performance. I'm going to take him off and I'm going to bring in Andres Mora and uh, give him a chance. So a double change here in the 56th minute. Perhaps a little bit early to be doing a double change. 
But um, taking off a few of the players who really haven't played to the occasion just yet. We don't want to go down a man. We do need to still defend well this set piece. Ball into the box cleared. But only as far as Uribe, the Peruvian. Gandolfi edge of the box. They have a chance. Nice block there. I'm not sure who that was. But that was a great block. But PSG still with the ball at the edge of the box. They are probing. Can they get the ball into the box? Bouchard stands up tall and firm. Jason Hall just get the ball clear. Nice. Now can we break away? Not many man, men ahead. Van Dijk just absolutely surrounded, but gets the ball to Paul Smith. Mitchell's there. Hit that. Take a bow, my son. It's 1-0. It's our first shot of the game. We've hit them on the break like we like to do. Great play. That is the kind of Gibraltar apex goal that you expect to see. Obviously, we can't get too carried away yet, but if we could get hold on to this goal lead, that would be incredible. We've been very good defensively. We've been firm in our 4-4-2. We've had that one chance to break away. Mitchell with the finish. The Brazilian, of course, on loan from Stuttgart with the goal. Paul Smith with the assist. A nice goal there. And now, well, really, we just want to defend well for the last 20 minutes. Part of me at this point thinks go defensive. But if you've been watching the series, you'll know it's never really worked for us. It's, it, it's, it's never been great. I'm going to do it anyway. And I know that if they now score, someone is going to write in the comments, Jack, you shouldn't have played... You shouldn't have played on defensive. You should have, you know, you should have kind of stuck with what you knew and, you know, stayed on the attack. But at the same time, if we now hold on for a 1-0, it looks amazing. And if I stay on attacking and concede, someone will say, well, you should have played on defensive. I'm not going to consider what people think. I'm going to play defensive. We need to hold on now. There is not long left in this game. PSG with the ball at the edge of the box. Don't let the ball get in. He does. Malcolm there. Bouchard blocks it. Can we counter again? Jason Hall, poor ball up. PSG still in possession. Bring the ball. Malcolm out wide on the left here. Don't let him get the ball into the box. He does get it in. But Leung is there. Holds on to it. Oh, it's some good goalkeeping. Hopefully he can now just get a good kick away. He can't. He gives it straight back to them. And now Roya, a familiar name. A player who's tormented us in the past with a real opportunity there. Did well. But in the end, his finish went way wide of the mark. But now another set piece. Can we get it clear? We can, but only as far as Carlos Eduardo. Now with Uribe, the Peruvian, Lopez, Carlos Eduardo back with the ball here. This is getting nervy. Can we defend? Lopez with the shot. Lopez with the goal. A crucial away goal there for PSG. It's been coming in this game. Maybe I'll regret switching to defensive, but, well, what can you say? We held on for 87 minutes against this PSG side. In the end... A goal there, squeezing in. Perhaps Ludwig Young will be disappointed to be beaten at the near post, but he has made some good saves in this game. I'm going to switch back to attacking for the last two minutes. It isn't going to make a difference here. I don't think Van Dijk, ball in. Bouchard hits it. Oh, Lopez with a save. For a second, I thought we were about to have one of those poetic football ends to a match. What a goal that could have been for us. Unfortunately, not to be. Going to finish 1-1 here in the first leg. Going to tell the players I'm happy with how that went. They look very happy. I'm very happy. 1-1 it finishes. It's a good result. You know, we limited them to one away goal. We go into the second leg with it still to play for, although going away from home, going to Paris, it's not going to be easy for us. Either way, though, guys, I'm going to be back in just a second. We have a second game to get to. You don't want to see the games in between. We'll be back for that second leg away from home. 1-1 in the first leg. Maybe we can do something on the road. Okay, guys, so we are back again for the second leg here against PSG. It's away from home at Parc de Princes. I'm hoping... For a good performance, 1-1 in the first leg. I still don't expect us to go through, but we go into this game with a real fighting chance. A great performance at home. Hopefully we can build off that again today. Just a little bit of news. Uh, since the last game, of course, we have played some matches. Uh, we won them all. I didn't really talk about the games before last episode, or before the last game, rather, that you guys just saw. But as you can see here, we won them all convincingly. Being Gibraltar Lions 4-1 and 2-0, perhaps the highlights of the results. However... Uh, I guess the fact that the Gibraltar Lions and Lincoln Redimps games were so close really is testament to the fact that, I don't know, maybe a few teams in the league are starting to become a little bit more competitive. You'll also notice here that we have our youth candidate team. Uh, we haven't got any good regens again this year. Anthony Senna, uh, the best of the bunch. He doesn't look too bad. You know, at the start of the save, this guy would have been a star Gibraltarian player for us. Unfortunately, where we find ourselves now and where the league finds itself means he's not ever really going to be of much use to us. I have encountered a weird bug here, and I don't know what's causing this but basically if I go to my youth academy team none of the players show up but they all do exist because well I can show them unless I've just had a brainwave why is that unticked 
Why is that? The fact that I've realised that that's my mistake now makes me feel like a moron. You can see, looking at our team here, th this is the academy. All Gibraltarian players. It feels like a long time ago now since Felix and Gary came through as Spaniards. It's been a lot of years, really, with only Gibraltarian regens. But either way, that's not what we're going to focus on today. Today is about this big game. And while well, looking at the team here, a little bit of injury news. Tuzon out injured, Frigere out injured, JJ out injured. Means a little bit of a reshuffle. Uh, at the back, we're going to go with Mustafa and Del Sol, of course. Mustafa, the Egyptian beast, the pharaoh. I feel like that's what I should nickname uh, my Egyptian regens. But at the same time, that's a really boring kind of generic nickname to give to someone who's Egyptian, the pharaoh. Either way, alongside him, Walter Del Sol back in the side. I didn't talk about it earlier in the episode, but during January, there was a lot of teams coming in for a lot of my players, and they really did start to throw hissy fits. However, for the most part, it seems like those players have really cheered up. Obviously, good league form, mostly to do with that. And uh, despite rejecting bids for the likes of Paul Smith, uh, Walter Del Sol uh, and Bouchard throughout the winter and them kind of kicking up a fuss about it, they seem to be again enjoying their football at the club, which is always good. Either way, with the team, I mentioned the injuries. Our starting 11 for today's game, we go with Young in goal, left back Jason Hall, Mustafa and Del Sol in midfield, Marquez at the back's the only change there, being Mustafa coming in for Frigere, who's out injured for the next two weeks. In midfield, we go with Smith, Bouchard playing the more defensive midfielder role, that was a conscious decision. He can kind of fill that role for us quite nicely. His tackling's not the best, but he's a good player when it comes to his marking. Alongside him, we go with Martinez as our advanced playmaker. Gonna give Daniel Martinez... A chance here. We've not really played him in this advanced playmaker role. When I've played him, it's often been out at right mid or at defensive mid. This is his kind of best role, and we're going to see how he gets on there. Out on the right-hand side, we go with Christian Mendes, the Colombian. And up front in this game, we are going to go with Mitchell and Van Dijk. So I'm hoping for a good performance here. Let's get into the game. No real pressure on the team. I feel like, you know, we go into this game, we got a 1-1 result in the first leg. Obviously, we do want to build off that. But at the same time, we need to realise that we're punching above our weight. We're going to see what we can do here. Can we have the fairy tale? That is the question. As long as we perform well and we don't get completely this completely destroyed, I'll be happy. Looking at it here, confused a few players with my team talk, telling them I expect them to win. I don't expect them to win. I sometimes tell you guys, as I tell my players, there's no pressure that I expect them to win. This is not one of those days. We go into this game knowing that because of away goals, we do need to score at least one goal to have a chance of going through. We're going to stick with the 4-2 attack that served us so well in that first leg. And uh, perhaps we were unfortunate really to uh, concede that late goal against PSG, albeit it, we kind of only scored from our only goal on target, or only shot on target. Either way, set piece here, ball whipped in, let's clear it. We're not going to clear it, Uribe with the goal. In fact, no it wasn't, it was Mariano Lepe with the goal. But either way, it's a set piece goal, it's an annoying one to concede. And well, we knew that if we wanted to have a chance in this game, we were going to have to score. And if we wanted to win only scoring one... We couldn't concede, and I kind of went into this game knowing that we're probably going to need to score one or two. We now need at least one just for the draw, and that's assuming that we don't concede more. Looking at the stats here, PSG on top in this game. I want to a team talk. I want to tell the players passionately that, uh, that they can do this. I'm going to demand more from them. A few of the players are looking frustrated. Not entirely surprising. Parmi wants to switch to the 4-4-2 counter. I feel like it could serve us quite well in this game. And I think that is actually a change that we're going to deploy here. 35 minutes, another set piece. Let's not concede another set piece. That is not what we want here. Ball switched out to Carlos Eduardo. Nice block, but ball might still make its way into the box. And Roya, well, he's a player who's tormented us for a number of years. I think he's just scored a screamer. It was a good finish. He hit it hard. The keeper couldn't get across to it. Carlos Eduardo, with the initial cross attempt, didn't make it in. Ventuelli got the ball in and it's not overhead oh my gosh we've just been given the dench sausage by Roya he has just given us a croissant and it's not a present present I really wanted I don't even know what that means it's an overhead kick I had a feeling it might be and well if that's the goal that knocks us out of the Champions League I feel like we can sit and say to ourselves well we're, we're perhaps a little bit unlucky and unstuck by one of the goals of the tournament I'm going to tell the players that that was absolutely terrible and their performance was extremely poor. I think we're going to full-on YOLO it. I feel like we have to at this point. We have to start committing men forward. Looking at the team, not a great performance by some of our players. A few bookings to players who, I don't want to say they have a record of getting in trouble, but Smith out on the left, I mean, please be a good boy. You, you've been a, you've been naughty in these kind of games before and got unnecessarily sent off. You're on a 6.6. .6. Part of me wants to take you off. 
Although Martinez as well not playing too great either. Um, uh, what do I want to do here? What do I want to do? I kind of need to take off Van Dyke and I supply Mitchell as a centre attack in mid, which we could do. It's not his kind of preferred role, but it's definitely somewhere he could play. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to have to change the system here. I'm going to bring in Mora and swap him with Bouchard. I'm also going to bring on Chris Hall at left midfield. Might be a little bit of a, an odd change, an unexpected one. You know, dropping Paul Smith, the Australian. But he has a record for getting sent off. And we need to roll the dice. We're going on the attack with a 4-2-3-1. We need at least two goals here in the second half. Um... You know, it's one last roll of the dice really here. This could massively backfire and it wouldn't surprise me if it does. But we need some goals and we, we need something to come our way. I'm going to change the wingers to attacking as well. I'm going to change Mitchell, I think, to play just off the front man but as a deep lying forward on support. Let's go with that. Let's see what we can do here. Bit of an unorthodox formation at this point but really now... We're looking to just try and get anything from this game that we can. Looking at the stats, PSG by far and away the better team. Not entirely surprising. We're yet to have a clear-cut chance. We still need those two goals if we want to get anything from this game. And with 10 minutes left, it's time to go on overload. It's time to roll the dice one last time. Hope that we can get lucky. Unfortunately for us, it's just not going to be our day here. It's only going to finish 2-0 unless there's a late goal. We've actually played reasonably well defensively. Unfortunately for us, just a lack of chances created and PSG's superior quality, particularly defensively, really shining through there. I'm going to tell the players they were unlucky today. We go out in the Champions League knockout stage for the third time in four years. Am I disappointed? Yes. Am I surprised? No. But at the same time, this is only going to help our coefficient. It's going to help the nation grow. And I'm eager to see where we end up next year because another good performance in Europe here really is going to help the entire nation's kind of reputation advance that little bit further. And that's going to be exciting to see come the end of the year. Either way, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode from me. A little bit of a disappointing one, really. Again, we crash out in the Champions League first knockout round. It's a hurdle we are yet to overcome. When will I be back? Well, of course, we will be back for the end of season live. Come Gibraltar lines in the Senior League Cup. Already a fixture confirmed. Maybe we'll be meeting them in the Rock Cup. Maybe it'll be someone else. You guys will have to stick around to find out. If you have enjoyed this video, leave a like. And other than that, it is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.